Hey guys, John from FlightMikeAlpha.com, and today we're going to be looking over some more complicated airport diagrams here, how to interpret them, what all the symbols mean, and how to navigate around a slightly more complex airport. So today we're going to be taking a look at the airport diagram for Witham Field in Stewart, Florida. So KSUA is the airport. And as you can see, there's a few different symbols on here that you don't typically see on your average airport diagram. Now we've gone over the basics on another video of all your frequencies up here, the magnetic variation. But a few new things are things like the EMAS, these X's on the taxiways and this portion of a runway that's now closed. And especially down here where you see the taxiways aren't totally joined up to the runways that they serve. So it's a little bit confusing as to how to actually get to these runways. And as you notice, there's also hot spots at each of these intersections here because it is confusing for a lot of pilots. We also have this large non-movement area here where we can move around freely without talking to ATC, although we may want to check in with them. We could easily taxi from this FBO here all the way over to that FBO over there without making any radio calls if we were just repositioning our aircraft or maybe taxing over to go get fuel. Now we see these hotspot one and hotspot two designations here. So we're gonna go ahead and check our chart supplement and see what exactly that's all about. We can obviously see there's something funky going on here with the taxiway and the runway. We'll go ahead and see what they actually have uh, explained for us in the chart supplement. So as we go into the back of our chart supplement here, we find Florida and we can find the Stewart Airport or Witham Field. And we have hotspot one, hotspot two, intersecting runways, wrong runway departure risk, check runway alignment, and runway one, two, and taxiway A1 or alpha one. So the uh, wrong runway departure risk is definitely a real issue and how, what they're saying here, check runway alignment, that's just when you check your DG with the actual runway heading. So as you come out here and you get lined up on a runway, they want to make sure that your DG in fact says 34 if you've been assigned runway 34 or 30 if you were assigned runway 30 to make sure you're taking off of the correct runway. Now some of the other simple symbology we have on here, we have the displaced threshold markings that we've talked about before in our basic video. We've got the closed taxiway and closed runway, so that's just pavement, it's just not used for anything anymore. And then these EMAS um, little things at the end of each runway. And the idea of EMAS, that's like crushable concrete that if an aircraft drives over, it just kind of sinks into and it helps to accelerate an aircraft in the event of a runway overrun. So if you're going a little too fast and you overshoot the end of the runway, you're gonna sink into that and it's gonna stop you before you hit whatever's on the other side of that runway, like a highway or go into the waterway. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. We're gonna take a little bit closer look at hotspot two and hotspot one. And then we're gonna look at it and see what this looks like in reality. So imagine we're at the FBO and this is actually part of that same closed runway from over here. So we're at this FBO and we taxi out on taxiway alpha and there's actually gonna be a few hold short lines here. Obviously there's a hold short line for runway one, two. There's gonna be a hold short line for runway seven, but to take off for runway seven, you're gonna to have to cross runway one, two. So we're gonna go ahead and see what that looks like in real life. So we're over here on our ramp area and we see our closed runway where they took that old piece of pavement and just turned it into a ramp area and taxiway. And we can taxi out, we've got a whole short line here because this is a non-movement area. And then of course taxiway alpha is a movement area that we have to get clearance from ATC to actually taxi on. So we get our clearance, they tell us taxi via alpha to runway one seven, or I'm sorry, taxi via alpha to runway seven, not one seven. So we go out alpha and we encounter this hold short line here. And this is gonna be a hold short line for the approach to runway seven. Now we have a little run up area here and we have a little run up area over here as well. If we were taking off runway one, two, then we would have instructions to simply just proceed across here down alpha and do our run up and then hold short of runway one, two. But if we were told to expect to depart runway seven, we'd wanna be holding short and not getting on to runway one, two here. You're not gonna just taxi across and do your run up there. So we have these extra hold short lines here that we really have to watch out for. For two runways, we actually have three different hold short lines and a lot of different ways we could approach these runways. 
We also have these little dash lines here, and that's simply just telling you that when you're doing your run up in this area, try to stay behind this line. That'll let larger aircraft with larger wingspans taxi on by without interfering with you during your run up. So this is our hotspot two over here where we have to be alert for Alpha One and Runway Seven. Now if we zoom out here and we come over to the other side of the airport to hotspot one, we can see we have one hold short line here. So if you're told taxi via Alpha to runway 34, well we would hold short here, then taxi out and depart runway 34. If you're told to depart runway 30, well then you're going to be taxiing out and crossing runway 34 before you can actually depart on 30. Note you could also be told to taxi from the ramp over here via Alpha to Delta and depart runway 30 at Delta. So it could sound something like taxi runway 30 via Alpha Delta. And you would wind up holding short here and doing an intersection departure at runway 30 and Delta. Now you can see here how this could be very easy to get confused on when you taxi out Alpha and you get up to your hold short line here and all you see ahead of you is just pavement. And you can't quite tell once you get out here what runway you're actually on. That's why you always check with your DG and conveniently enough there are signs around that kind of help to guide you there. There are some signs put up here in the grass that'll direct you as to what runway you're actually on when you're lined up. Typically we don't have little signs here that'll say you're on runway 34 or little signs over on the other side that say you're on runway 30. So that's just a slightly more complicated airport diagram. Nothing too crazy. There's some extra helpful markings on here with the EMAS and with these hotspots denoting that we have some uh, confusing uh, taxi runway intersections there. We also have this little hold area and that actually denotes our hold short line there for 34 and 30. And just because it's absent from over here, don't expect that it doesn't exist. Obviously this hold area is just denoting a hold short line. Well, we have three hold short lines over there that we saw, and none of them are depicted, so certainly watch out for that. These are pretty typical, you know, if you're taxiing out from the FBO, you'd be told taxi via Charlie, cross runway 30, and uh, Delta to runway 16, cross runway 25. So to get out to either of these runways, you're going to be crossing at least two runways, but nothing too crazy. Just, of course, hold short of those runways until you're clear to cross, and whenever in doubt, just call up ground control and ask for a clarification or even ask for progressive taxi instructions because that's super helpful. So that's pretty much it for our advanced airport diagram uh, discussion here. Note also we got a little star there that Stewart Tower is part-time. It closes at night and everyone goes home. It's not a 24-7 tower. But that's pretty much it. If you have any questions at all about this, leave them in the comments below. Really appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you check out our Patreon page. We could really use your support to help keep our project going. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Keep up with our latest videos. And as always, if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. We'll see you all next time.